So here I was trying to make some kind of a super interesting video about Martian scientific discoveries, when everyone on the internet started to talk about yet another unusual image from the surface of Mars that's probably aliens or extraterrestrial intelligence building structures on a surface. Alright, let's discuss the experiments everyone's talking about, and why it's probably not aliens, and why it's just a geological feature. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's take a look at the picture first, and let's actually discuss the Martian surface and a lot of different intriguing features on the surface imaged in the last few months, discussing what we've learned about Mars in the process, but also talk about some of the dramatic shifts and dramatic changes Mars is currently going through. But here's that image. This was trending on Twitter and a few other social networks for the last few days, and obviously raised a lot of eyebrows. A discovery of what seems to be some kind of an ancient pyramid on Mars, I guess, maybe? Except that, as always, this is maybe just a little bit fake. Fake because if you actually look on the bottom, there's also a link to some kind of a website which seems to be related to UFOs. And that's because this is not the real image that was posted by NASA a few days back. The real image looks like this. And though there is still a bit of a square shape in here, even here things were kind of processed. And so let's go take a look at the actual image posted by NASA, which you can find in the description below, and try to discover what's really there. So first of all, if you follow the link in the description, you'll notice that this image is unusually long vertically. As a matter of fact, you have to keep scrolling up and up until you find that shape we're looking for. And that's because, oh yeah, here it is. Here's that square. And that's because this image was taken by the Martian orbiter. Specifically, Mars Global Surveyor, that's been here for quite some time, and contains this Mars Orbiter camera that's able to take pictures pretty much actively as it orbits the planet. But if you're old enough, this image might remind you of something else. The famous face on Mars, taken by the Viking 1 back in 1976. This was obviously also very bizarre and very unusual, and even led to at least one episode of the X-Files. But as we've discovered within just a few years, and especially by reconstructing the structure in three dimensions, there was no face, it was just a very bizarre mountain. Which is pretty much the same thing here. This might resemble some kind of a square, or even some kind of a buried pyramid, but if you look closer, you'll notice that it's far from being a perfect square, and actually does resemble a typical mountain range. And a relatively small mountain, approximately 3 kilometers across. But then we get these fake edited images on the web, and it suddenly becomes the center of everyone's attention. Obviously though, this is very different from this. And this is definitely not some kind of a buried alien structure. As a matter of fact, here on Earth, we even have natural mountains that look more pyramid-like, and have also raised ufologist eyebrows back in the days. One of the more famous ones is this, the Bizarre Pyramid in Antarctica. Except that this is not a pyramid, and scientists have visited this place many times, because it's also very famous for a lot of different fossils. This is just one of the peaks in the Ellsworth Mountains, which have been very thoroughly explored and explained in a study right here that you can also find in the description. No pyramids, no aliens, no extraterrestrials, nothing but very beautiful mountains. And today we know that this is most likely the result of a very special type of carving through hundreds of millions of years of erosion, the result of what's known as free thaw erosion. Which is basically when you have a lot of water and a lot of snow go through its cycles for many, many years. And specifically when water and tiny pieces of snow fill cracks inside the mountain and then freeze at night with the ice expanding and slowly breaking the mountain apart. This basically causes gaps inside the rock to grow larger and larger over time, resulting in a lot of pressure that slowly breaks the mountain apart, forming these bizarre shapes. And we know this freeze-thaw phenomenon exists in a lot of places. Here's another famous mountain, Matterhorn, formed in a very similar way. And so likewise, this is also a result of some kind of an erosion, but exactly what kind is obviously unknown to us. And that's because Mars is just very different from Earth. Here, the water cycle would just not exist, and instead, we would actually have some kind of a carbon dioxide cycle that would produce different erosion. Erosion that's most likely caused by both the wind on Mars and the transition of carbon dioxide into the solid form, which then turns it back into gas when it gets warmer. Now, when it comes to wind, for example, we know that based on some of the recent ingenuity measurements, the winds on Mars are much stronger than we thought. Previously, the average wind speed was expected to be approximately 10 to 15 meters per second, but Ingenuity regularly measured winds at least double the speed, up to 25 meters per second, detectable just a few weeks ago. And so if there are a lot of strong winds, we would obviously expect a lot of erosion. 
But right now, in the last few weeks, researchers have been actually observing Mars for this exact reason. We actually get to see a lot of these changes and a lot of this erosion in real time, because Mars is currently going through its New Year changes. It's going through one of the most active and even one of the most explosive periods when things on the surface start to change, as the surface in some regions is warming up. And that's because right now this planet is getting more and more active as the spring begins, and we get to see many of these changes in pretty much real time. For example, the ice on its poles is changing, but so are the individual structures around the entire Martian surface. And that's because here, as I mentioned before, there is really no liquid cycle, but there is a CO2 cycle, and that cycle is just a little bit different. Instead of ice turning into liquid and melting, here ice just becomes gas right away and sublimates. And the sublimation on Mars can be a little bit explosive. Explosive enough to suddenly create huge geysers on the surface, and transform the surface almost right away. And so here, as light shines through some of this carbon dioxide and heats up the bottom, it basically causes a sudden sublimation event where most of this ice suddenly becomes gas and then just explodes, which then creates these very bizarre fan-like formations coming from within Mars. And sometimes after these eruptions, they'll often leave these bizarre marks on the surface we refer to as spiders, mostly because all of this ice inside is now gone and the surface above it starts to crumble. And here's actually a really cool picture that you might have not seen before of what the scientists now refer to as Martian kidney beans. Except that here this is just Martian dunes with a lot of ice between them. These are basically frozen sand dunes on Mars in the northern hemisphere. And here all of these dunes are covered by a tiny layer of carbon dioxide, which is kind of like frost here on Earth, which actually stops the wind from scooping up the sand and prevents these dunes from migrating just like they usually do on planet Earth. So basically, normally dunes are not actually stable formations, they do move across the surface, but very, very slowly as the sand migrates. But when there's so much frost, they don't. They freeze on the surface and stay in the same spot until the frost disappears. And so during the springtime, which is technically now, all of this frost will disappear and the dunes will become mobile once again. And so sometimes in the next two years, none of this will be here and it will all look very different. And very similar changes are visible in a lot of other locations, mostly in the North Pole. For example here, all of the bright spots are frozen CO2 that's now sublimating and spreading a lot of darker materials on the surface. This image by NASA basically shows us what most likely happens here. Which basically means that Mars might be a lot less desirable to settle on compared to what we usually think. So basically here, every two years, you get these super explosive geysers, also very likely extremely loud geysers, that explode all over the surface as all of this ice sublimates, producing this very bizarre terrain. And so even though spring on Earth might be more romantic and involves a lot of flowers and melted ice, on Mars it's just maybe a little bit explosive. It also involves a lot of frost avalanches, where you basically get these huge chunks of CO2 ice crashing down from the mountains, not to mention very powerful winds and even storms. But apart from all of these explosions and all of this falling ice, there's also a lot and a lot of dust devils. Something that we knew existed on Mars for over a decade now, because this was one of the first ones captured by the Martian orbiter. And here dust devils are essentially like tornadoes, but I guess not as powerful. And while in this image you get to see their tracks, or technically what the tracks of these dust devils left as they move across the surface and as they deposit dust in various locations where they passed. And this is actually an incredible image that we've never seen before, that basically confirms there are a lot of dust devils on Mars, and they're always created when the surface heats up, causing warm air to rise rapidly, in a very similar fashion to tornadoes on planet Earth. And just like tornadoes, they can last for hours, travel for tens of kilometers, leaving a certain mark on the surface that in this case resembles various dust trails. And though this is unlikely to be dangerous to astronauts, it will definitely affect solar panels, and depending on the speed of the particles, may cause abrasion of some of the more sensitive electronics. So definitely a really cool picture, and something we'll be hearing more about in some of the future studies. But at the same time, all of these changes on the surface, and specifically the warming up of the surface, is now most likely going to result in a famous Martian storm. And that's because in one of the recent studies, researchers investigated the surface changes and the onset of dust storms, correlating the amount of solar radiation, especially in certain locations on Mars, with predictions for the appearance of the enormous storms on Mars. With a separate study that used several observations from the Mars Global Surveyor, 
that involved approximately 10 years of observations, researchers discovered that Mars tends to absorb energy slightly different depending on its hemispheres. So basically here, the Martian northern hemisphere tends to absorb and re-emit heat differently from the southern hemisphere. We're actually going to discuss why these hemispheres are so different in a separate video that's coming out really soon, so do subscribe if you'd like to find out more. But essentially here the discovery was that there's a different excess of energy in the northern hemisphere compared to the southern hemisphere, with all of this excess very likely causing the beginning of the storms. And that's compared to planet Earth where things are more or less equal and the energy manages to balance out year after year. But on Mars the energy surplus very likely triggers a lot of these global dust storms and very likely as a result of the southern hemisphere warming up. It essentially causes a lot of dust particles to suddenly start kicking up the storms as all of this extra energy has to go somewhere. And because these storms become so massive, they essentially cover Mars from the Sun, which then reduces the solar radiation and eventually cools Mars down. And so just to summarize this, these storms seem to result from seasonal imbalances due to major differences in the Northern Hemisphere compared to the Southern Hemisphere. With all of the calculations and all of the details available in the study right here by Larry Guan. But all of these studies and all of these observations once again show us that Mars is just very, very different. And though there are some similarities to planet Earth, there are still a lot of differences even when it comes to erosion. Which is why we actually do find bizarre shapes like this, phenomena like this, or any of those other strange rocks discovered previously that we discussed in many videos before. But at least for now, that's basically all I wanted to mention. No aliens, no pyramids, just a lot of weather changes and a lot of erosion. And actually some conditions that are maybe a little bit too extreme. I mean, honestly, I would not want to be around when these geysers start on Mars. But anyway, until future discoveries and until future studies, and some of the other videos I'm currently making, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous discoveries in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.